Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Hearth. And today I am still outside in the chicken house. I've been outside way longer than I'm supposed to be. I got stuff to do inside and I'm still out here talking with chickens. <laughs> Fussing with a broody mama. But you all, I am outside today inside of our big hen house. And the reason why I'm in the reason why I'm in here is because I decided to take you along and show you what we are doing different on the homestead with our chickens. Now you all, many of you, if you have been oh calm down. If many of you have been following our journey for a long time, you know that when we built this chicken house, we built it in having the idea in mind of being able to have multiple flocks inside, right? And what we ended up doing was dividing this off, dividing this off, and having one side for our hens, and we have this side, which is what we call our nursery, okay? So in our nursery, we bring out our baby chicks. We put our broody mamas in here with their babies so that the babies don't get picked on by the chickens, you know. We put them in the nursery to allow the mamas and their hen and their babies to be in here together, right? Y'all remember Disco Lady being in here, right? You remember Big Mama being in here, right? You remember all of them being in here with their babies? <laughs> so we bring all our babies in here. We got some ducks over in the corner you probably can't see they have gotten extremely big right and and ducks grow super fast i mean super fast right so we have our ducks over there we have a hen right here who was injured she was injured because she was getting picked on by the other chicks and so we brought her over here to heal so we kind of use this as like nursery hospital <laughs> for our chicks right so they have a place to heal okay even the hens that sometimes the rooster can sometimes prefer one hen more so over another and they will end up scratching out all of her feathers and all of that and what we do is we just bring her over here and we leave her over here give her an opportunity to heal get her feathers back and then we slowly reintroduce her back into the main flock and recently, we've added our quail, and I'm sure you can hear them in the background, but we've added our quail in here as well. So now this is home to our quail. This is the nursery. This is the hospital. This is all of that, okay? And this is our brooder. Now, because when we hatch out eggs or when we get new poultry in for whatever reason, we put them out in this brooder right here to show you. This is the brooder. They have their feed. They have their waterer in here, you all. And this is where we have them at, right in here, okay? All right, so. <laughs> so, this is where we have all of our birds at. Now, hey, Mowgli. So, Bud is in here. Mowgli's trying to come in. Egypt's outside the door. Everybody want to be in here. But, you all. Let me turn this back around. Let me see. Okay. So you all, don't knock that over, bud. Go on. So you all, getting to today's video. Why? Okay. Why am I out here in the first place? Because, I'm going to tell you why. We're heading in a new direction, you all. Now, many of you who are homesteaders, some of you raise your own meat, right? Some of you, like we and others, we raise our own meat. And for years, since even when, since we've been here on the homestead, we've raised Cornish Cross for meat. And while we have really enjoyed doing that, I'm going to be honest with you, Mr. H and I, from the very beginning of it all, knew that we need a more sustainable source of meat for us because having to order them, depending on them to come through the mail from 
the hatchery. And I remember it even at one point we were too late because we lost some. And because we were just way too late with reordering, they were sold out because that happens. People order thousands of meat birds every year to raise on their homestead, on their farm, in their backyard even, for meat, okay? So for us, we knew we needed a different source, okay? Now, we, we did have a couple of Freedom Rangers or Red Rangers at one point. I think a couple of years ago, we ended up with a couple of Red Rangers um, that were meat birds, right? But it does take them a long time to grow out. Now, the Cornish Cross, they're ready for processing in as little as seven weeks, eight weeks, right? Nine weeks is the max, but before that meat is just not good. <laughs> but you all, for us, we wanted to look into something different. So we did start on a journey of trying to find an alternative. And like I said, we came across other varieties of meat birds, dual purpose birds, like your Buff Orpingtons, which are excellent egg layers, but they are also good for meat as well. Now our Buffs, our Buffs are some of the best mothers and best egg layers that we have. And we knew that we were not probably going to be processing any of them anytime soon, right? So that didn't quite, that wouldn't work out for us, right? That didn't quite go over well with what our long-term goals were. So what did we decide to do? Now, you all, I want to say uh, we watched Living Traditions Homestead. Their video came up on our feed. Gosh, I don't know how long ago, but it's been over a month. And I know it's been over a month. So now, and I'll tell you how I know that in a minute. It's been over a month. And then also, we mentioned, we heard Deep South Homestead mention it as well. And that really sent me on this journey to trying to figure out, would this be something that would work for us? And I believe it is. So what did we end up with? We ended up with these babies. Yes, we ended up with these. These right here are called American breast chickens, okay? And the American breast is a dual purpose bird, right? Because they are meat birds, but they are also egg layers. Now, word on the street, their reputation. <laughs> word on the street is that these are the best tasting chickens in the world. That's what I hear. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what I hear. These are the best tasting chickens in the world, you all. Yeah, that's what I hear. So I did more research on these and we decided that, hey, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to try and we're going to see because we are all looking for more ways to be more sustainable, more self-sustainable. And when YouTubers do video like this, videos like this where they're talking about ways to become more and more self-sustainable, our ears perk up, all of us, right? Because we are all looking and learning from one another. So we appreciate videos like that. When we when we see them, we're like, no, I didn't know about that. Let me go look. And then the more and more YouTube channels that will talk about it, the more and more of a help we're being to one another, right? So we're just going to continue to get the word out about these and we're going to see how it turns out for all of us. Okay. So you all, this is the American breast. Now for le legal reasons, this bird originally is not an American breed at all. The original name is actually French breast chickens. Okay. But because they're here in America with legal reasons, they had to be called American breasts. But it's the same bird. It's not a, a, a different breed. It's the same breed of chicken, just a different name. Okay? So, you all. Now, this particular chicken right here, we have 
10 down here that we ordered from a hatchery. I'm going to tell you all the name of the hatchery here shortly, but we ordered them from the hatchery. This one is the black breast chicken. Okay. They have four different breeds of breasts. They have the white, they have the blue, and they have the splash, okay? So it's a total of four. So we chose the black breasts, right? I just think they are a beautiful, beautiful bird, right? So we chose the black breasts, and they will dress out at about five pounds. Now, the difference with the weight between the black, the splash, the blue, and the white is that the black, blue, and splash will dress out at about five pounds, while the white will dress out at about six pounds or more, okay? Now, I was okay with the five-pound bird, which is why I went ahead and went with this little fella here and his crew. <laughs> Now, are we processing these? No, we are not. Um, it depends primarily on how many roosters we have, really, because we don't need a lot of roosters. We really only need one, but we'll hold on to two. If we have more than two, we'll hold on to at least two of them because we want to make sure we have a strong breeding flock of birds. And any roosters we have, and we'll keep the strongest of the roosters, okay? And any roosters we have more than two, we will process them out. And I'm excited to do that because I really want to know what that meat is going to taste like. I'm really excited to find out if it is all together what we have read, okay? So you all, this is what we're doing now um, with these little breast chickens right here as a source of meat for our homestead okay and i know i know i know you're tired of me holding you i've been holding you long enough you want me to put you down i'll put you down okay i'm gonna put you okay well at least say bye say bye okay okay i'll put you down now there you go so you all this is why we have chosen to go this route because sometimes, you all, it can be quite difficult getting the meat birds in, as I mentioned before. And now we have certain flus going around, right? Where they are literally destroying flocks of birds in different places. So you just kind of never know what could happen to prevent you from being able to get what you need. And we just don't want to be in that situation. So finding out about the American breast chicken, this is a total game changer, not just for us, but I'm sure for thousands of homesteaders around the world. I'm sure this is like, this is gonna be amazing for us and for you too, if you are looking for a more sustainable meat source for your chicken, okay? Now, where did we get them from? We got them from Breast Farms, and they are located in Mississippi. You can go to their website, Breast Farms. We are not affiliated with them in any way. They were closest to us when it came to ordering chickens, and they were not in an area where there was that issue with the flu, bird flu, right? So we chose to go with them, and all of our birds survived when they came. We ordered a total of 10. We ordered 10 of these and we ordered six black copper morans that we did not get, but they were very kind about it. And they offered us a refund to ship the birds or a credit. And I just opted to get the credit because Mr. H, uh, Mr. H said, we need to order more of the breast chickens. And we're not ordering multiple uh, breeds or colors, if you will, we're only going to stick with the one. Okay. So we'll probably be ordering more of, um, the black breast chickens real soon. And the, uh, black copper Morans. I am just, we have some splash Morans. They in here. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not in here. <laughs> they're not in here. 
But anyway, you all, we have uh, about five Splash Morans baby chicks. They're not in here. I have them in my little brooder box uh, inside, okay? But, y'all, I am in love with those chocolatey eggs, I'm telling you. And I'm excited to be able to get them and taste them myself. I'm hearing everybody talk about how rich they are, how good they are. I want to know for myself. <laughs> so... I may order a few uh, black copper morans from them to go along with the five splash morans that we have and a few more of the American breast chickens. So you all, whether you want a black American breast, a white American breast, a splash American breast, or a, um, what's that other one? Blue American <laughs> breast chicken the colors you can choose whichever one you want but they do have them available at breast farms all right and again there they are located in mississippi all right so you all i just wanted to say i am so glad that living traditions homestead mentioned them because like um just like they were many of us have been looking for an alternative to the Cornish Cross, and we just didn't want to deal with the Freedom Rangers, the Red, we just didn't want to deal with all of that. We wanted something that would be more sustainable, so we have it now. They lay their own eggs. We incubate their eggs when we are ready. We can collect their eggs over a seven day period, putting them in an egg carton on the counter, not the refrigerator, <laughs> on the counter, and within a seven day period, we can collect as many as we can and incubate them. And the great part is that we can do that on our own terms. And that's what we really like. Okay. So you all, that's going to do it. So if you think that this would be a good source of meat for you all, those of you that are raising your own chickens and those of you that are considering raising your own chickens for meat, this will be a great alternative because not only will you get eggs to eat, you will also get eggs to incubate. So that's something to consider. So if you do go to Breast Farms, you tell them Homestead Heart sent you. Okay? Let them know Homestead Heart sent you over. I did tell them we was going to talk about them. And they were glad for us to do that. <laughs> so if you go on over to Breast Farms, let them know Homestead Heart sent you over. And you all... Get an incubator because you're going to need it, all right? They don't sit on their eggs. And if I'm going to do this for meat, I know I have some great broody mamas with my buffs and my uh, red stars, right? But I'm not going to depend on them to sit on my eggs that I need for meat. I'm going to do that myself, all right? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure I do that myself. I let them handle their babies and I'm going to handle these. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. That is going to do it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, awesome. Give it a thumbs up. Um, go on over to Living Traditions Homestead. Look at their video on their American breast chickens. Our chicks are just over three weeks old. They're almost, are they not old? They might be like three to three and a half weeks old, three and a half weeks old maybe, right now, okay? So, you all, they are growing nicely. They look good, they look healthy, and I'm very pleased with them. So again, go on over to Living Traditions Homestead and watch their video on the uh, American breasts that they have. And also, if you're gonna order them, go on over to Breast Farms and Order yourself some um, uh, American breast, the color of your choosing, and start being a little more self-sustainable with raising your own meat, and you ain't got to depend on nobody to send you any chicks anymore, hopefully, okay? So we're going to see. We're going to see, all right? So far, I'm very pleased. Now, real quick, I'm going to talk to you. I have two meat birds in here we ordered 25 from meyer hatchery a while ago they're in the chicken tractor we processed them this week okay this was our batch that came in 
two to three, three weeks later, all right? So this batch won't be processed. I think these birds right here are three weeks old, so they won't process out for another four weeks, okay? But we only got two left. What happened to them? A snake got in here, climbed into my brooder, and attacked all of my meat birds. And it was not um, a rat snake or a king snake, you know. Rat snakes would have just eaten them, right? They just would have eaten them. No, they had puncture wounds on their sides, their backs, their legs, their head. They were just spread out dead in here. I have two left out of 26. I came outside to 20 something dead. They didn't all die at once. Some died later that day. Others died the next morning. So in a two day period, I lost 24 baby chicks. Where's the snake? I don't know. I don't know. So now what we've done is that this does have a lid on it, right? This does, ha does have a lid or a cover over it, but being in the nursery, we felt like they were safe in here and we were wrong. That snake could have just been passing through because he's gone now. He's gone now. Our quail, we lost one quail. The quail was dead. We lost one quail. All of the others were fine. It was just everybody in this brooder that were killed. Our American breasts were not out here then, and our two bourbon red turkeys were not out here then. They were still inside in my smaller brooder, keeping them warm in the house because the temperatures overnight were still getting pretty low and they were not quite big enough to come out here. So now what we have to do is when I close this up on the end, which is where I think, because there's an opening, like he could have pushed his way in, and I'm thinking that's what he did in that corner. So now I have to put two flat bricks on each corner to keep that from happening again. But the plan is to make a stronger top on here to where it's heavier all the way around the sides because we don't want something like that to happen ever again. That, that snake is gone. He was not in here anywhere. I looked for him because I was on a mission. I was on a mission. So I looked for that joker. I did. And yes, I was going to end him, okay? Because he, <laughs> he killed all my birds. Read what you saw. <laughs> anyway, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, I was upset. I was very angry to come out and see that. Okay? I was very angry to come out and see that. No one wants to come out and see that. Yeah. And the puncture wounds were big. They were not small. So that kind of lets me know the snake could have been about five to six feet long because of how big the puncture wounds were on these litty bitty birds. They were just stretched out dead. Yeah, and the ones that were still living, they were so lethargic. They was just literally just like this, just could hardly stand and they would fall over and then they would try to get back up. They were literally fighting for their lives, but they had no hope because of the holes in their body. I knew they weren't gonna make it and they did not. So I believe that that happened. I got outside at about eight o'clock that morning, I wanna say, 7.45, eight o'clock. So this literally had to have just happened around five, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it had to have happened early, earlier than, it didn't happen the night before. It didn't happen the evening before because I was out here that evening and they were all fine, healthy, moving around, running, playing, you know, doing what baby chicks do. So they were fine that night. And then come out the next morning and you find just total destruction inside 
of a brooder with a lid on it. But like I said, this corner right here, anything literally could have pushed up and went under there. And I never thought about a snake doing that. I always thought that they were fine. And now I know how the snake got in even because I have up here, you see this wire. We put this um, welded wire up here to keep the guineas from flying over. But we also have that wire, that welded wire on the doorway right here, okay? And I believe that snake came right on through this door, right on inside of my brooder and attacked and killed all of our chicks, okay? So you all, now we have taken extra precaution to make sure that this does not happen. How did the snake get in the chicken house in the first place? The only thing I could think of is that he came in through their little chicken door. That's the only way he could have gotten in here was through their little door that we leave open all night long and the chickens go in and out as they please. So now the door is closed. We close it up at night to keep something like that from happening. Their run is fenced off and if you follow our channel you know they're fenced in. So their run is fenced. So this snake literally came in from the outside in the run, in the house, through the door, attacked and killed my chickens and left out again. Yes. Lucky him, he left out again. So you all, that's going to do it for this video. I wanted to talk to you all about the new breed of chickens that we have here on the homestead called American Breast Chickens. And we are so excited to be raising them and not having to order meat birds anymore, hopefully in future. Now we still have... Uh, a batch of meat birds coming in soon. It's our final batch for the season. Even though we lost a batch of 25, we're not gonna reorder. We're just gonna go with the 50. We got 25 that we're gonna be processing soon and we got 25 more coming. So we're just gonna roll with that. That's what we got. So yeah, but y'all that's, that's gonna do it for this video. Now I'll say this, if they grow as fast as we say, is, I'm sorry, if they grow as fast as they say, we can still get the meat that we want. It'll be pushing it, but we can still do it, right? But we'll see. Y'all, that's it. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. If you haven't done so, give our video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos we upload to our channel. Thank you all again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And we'll see y'all in the next video.